Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of President Dr. Devin Stevenson and Athletic Director Ramsey Ross, we would like to welcome you to the 2024 FCSAA Region 8 State Championships. Our last matchup for the day has your Northwest Florida State Raiders taking on the Bucks of Florida Southwestern. Ladies and gentlemen, prior to the start of each of today's games, we'd like to recognize members of the 2024 Division I All-FCSAA men's basketball team. Members of the All-FCSAA team playing in today's fourth game are from Northwest Florida State College, Rasheed Jones. And from Florida Southwestern State College, District Lindsay. And from Northwest Florida State College, Jamal Sumlin. And from Florida Southwestern State College, Jay Sean Thomas. Congratulations. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of President Dr. Devin Stevenson and Athletic Director Ramsey Ross, we would like to welcome you to the 2024 FCSAA Region 8 State Championships. And now for our starting lineups. First, for the visitors listed on the scoreboard, the Bucks of Florida Southwestern. At forward, a 6'10", redshirt sophomore from Fort Myers, Florida, number zero, Tyrone Baker. At guard, a 6'2", sophomore from Aurora, Illinois, Number two, Jason Thomas. At forward, a 6'6 sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky. Number four, Dastrick Lindsay. At guard, a 6'6 sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. Number 11, A.J. Hopkins. And at forward, a 6'7 redshirt freshman from Naples, Florida, number 21, Evans Paul. And the head coach for the Bucks, Coach Eric Murphy. And now the starting lineups for the Raiders of Northwest Florida State College. At guard, a red shirt freshman from Cleveland, Ohio, number one, Jamal Sumlin. At guard, a red shirt freshman from Brooklyn, New York, number two, Tawan Simpkins. And at guard, a red shirt freshman from Marion, Indiana, number three, Rashid Jones. And at forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Albany, Georgia, number 10, Jaden Scheider.
And at forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Kansas City, Missouri, number 24, Tavion Banks. And the Raiders are coached by Mr. Steve DeMeo. Hope you guys have not gone to sleep yet. It's just past 9 o'clock on the East Coast. It's 825 Central Time here in Knightsville, Florida. Raider Arena, home of the Northwest Florida State Raiders. And they are about to tip it off as the number four seed giving host to the number five Florida Southwestern Bucks. This utilize, utilize that bench to the best of their ability. And here we go with game four of the first night of the Region 8 tournament. Coach E, what are you looking forward to in our matchup featuring the Raiders and the Bucks? Well, this is our first look at uh, Florida Southwestern Bucks as number two hits it for Florida Southwestern. That's Jay Sean Thomas. But uh, from the Raiders, you know, it's a fast paced game. Great defense, like we have right here, swinging the ball. But I'm, I'm looking at the length of the Bucks. Look like these guys want to get it up and down themselves also. About the same pace that we've been looking at all night. Already I'm looking at uh, the long ball is going to fly for the Bucks tonight. Well, Florida Southwestern State comes into this game with a 22-8 record. 13-3 at home, 8-3 on the road, 1-2 at neutral sites. And then, of course, the home floor Raiders are coming in at 26-4. 13-4 right here on this home floor. 6-0 on the road and 7-0 in neutral site places. So they've actually lost four games right here in this arena. Have the Raiders play well on the road and in neutral site places. So we've seen, we've seen them struggle a couple times against Chipola and Gulf Coast in the Panhandle Conference. But they also have beaten Chipola and Gulf Coast in the Panhandle Conference. So Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking... Uh they got to stay focused, stay locked in. Rashid Ra. Jones. And Rod Jones with a quick bucket right there. First points for the Raiders. In that first possession, it was Taquan Simpson trying to get to uh, the bucket. You know, trying to get downhill. Nice backdoor cut. Stolen by Banks as he pushes the transition for the Raiders. And it's Sumlin. Kicking it around, finding Jones again at the top of the three. Can't get it to go, but it's rebounded by Banks. Yeah, I think Tawan Simpson is going to keep doing what he does, trying to attack the bucket, get guys off their feet, try to get downhill. TB, he's got a – he's going to have a job rebounding tonight. And Scheider, I'm looking at his matchup right now. Look like uh, he he doesn't have the height, but he might be a little wider. There we go, Tawan trying to get inside. Shot her with a little head fake. Not able to connect. TB going to be called for that foul. It's a push off. Mm -hmm. Tavion Banks. I'm sorry for those that don't know. One thing the Raiders like to do is they share... Banks and Scheider down low, trying to get the rebounds and the putbacks. And you're going to see Sumlin pushing this ball up for the Raiders, trying to feed it to Simpkins and Jones, who are the two leading scorers for Northwest on the perimeter. Here is oh, Banks with a block right there. That was Evans Paul. Trying to go up with it, but contested. It'll stay Bucks ball. 
you see him set up in a one-two-one one setup. Little screen, roll back. Paul turns it over. Raiders push it up. Scheider then turns it over on the Raiders end. It's Thomas trying to find somebody to hand it off to or pass it off to. Slows it up. Calls for an on-ball screen. Baker sets it. Thomas picks up his dribble. Now Lindsay working the double team. Oh, Baker finds the ball and controls it as he scores two for the Bucks. It's a nice trap they uh, tried to put down on that baseline, but they happen to find a buck slash into the bucket. And that was Baker, the 6'10", 200-pound redshirt sophomore from Fort Myers, transfer from Dayton. Bucks get the steal again. They push it up. Oh, wow. Number four can't connect. That's Lindsey. Sumlin rebounds, pushes the ball up himself, dishes it over to Scheider, and he gets it off the glass for two. Here's Lindsey again. Nowhere to go, so he kicks it back to his guard, Thomas. Thomas is... FCSAA All-State player, first team All-Citrus Conference as well. The guard for Florida Southwestern. Pull up Jay from Tyrone Baker is short, rebounded by the Raiders. They say that uh, Baker is just a freak athlete. He can do everything on the floor. Here's Banks inside, kicks it out to Simpkins, and he gets it to go for three. The Raiders are up now 7-5 in their first lead of the night. See the Raiders trying to push through these on-ball screens. There's going to be a lot of physical play. Oh, nice little roll right there. That was Jay Sean Thomas, the 6'2 sophomore from Aurora, Illinois. He is signed to play at Radford. First team all Citrus Conference. Here's Tavion Banks left open at the top of the wing, but he can't get it to connect. Rebounded by Lindsay as he pushes up the fast break. Raiders in their man-to-man -man defense. Oh, nice kick out. So far from Florida Southwestern, I'm noticing a lot of on-ball screens with the other three. Oh, nice steal. Waiting in spots to score. Tavion Banks gets the little oh. lob but can't get it to fall. He gets his own rebound and then kicks it off the glass for two more. Nice little pass from Rod Jones. Yeah, being unselfish there, giving that up to Banks. Yeah. Sumlin with the on-ball defense. This is a turnover for the Bucks. Turnover by Jay Young. We're going to have our first break ourselves. Northwest Florida up 9-7 to seven on Florida Southwestern. We'll be right back. Really? This view is awesome. I've said it before. We do live in paradise. There's also beauty that we can't see. But believe me, it's breathtaking. Nature. Beauty. Natural living. It's what we believe in. It's time. Choose natural gas.
Here's a live look at the Raiders bench as Coach DeMeo is drawing up some offense. for his team up 9-7. So far today, a little recap. Tallahassee defeated Daytona State by a point in overtime, 113 to 112. There were 63 foul calls and 85 free throw attempts in that game. And they're moving on to play Chipola on Friday for the semifinals at 1 o'clock. And just before this game, we saw the number one seeded Eastern Florida Titans beat the number eight Hillsboro Hawks. Nice backdoor cut. Way they, to share the ball right there. They await the winner of this game as Banks gets his own rebound, but it's in swatted away oh, by Rob, Baker. I thought Rob was going to pull that three right there. Here's Banks in the short corner, and he gets the shooter's roll to go. So, so far, almost every possession is an on-ball screen or an off-ball screen for Florida Southwestern. Constant movement or constant on-ball movement. And we've got a foul here on number 11, Trey Brown. It's his first and the team's second of the half. See a little 1-3-1 one, one set out of bounds here from the Bucks. They just lob it inside oh, wow. right over the head of Sumlin. And this is number 10, Cole Franklin with two points. Franklin got three Raider players off the ground on that. And now we have a technical on the coach for Florida Southwestern, Eric Murphy. He was on the floor as the official was running down, and he ran into him. So he gets an automatic tech for being on the floor. I don't know. Sometimes I don't. That wasn't intentional. He was. Yeah. Some, you know, you're trying to talk to your players down on the other end of the court. I understand the coach's box and all that, but technically the official's part of the floor, so just standing on the floor. <laughs> Rob missed the first, well, he missed the free throw to have the ball on the sideline. So he just had the same situation. Little moments like that can definitely oh, change. They affect the game. Affect What's coming up? I mean, now if he gets a tech somewhere in the game for a real situation, he's yeah. gone. Been there, done that. Anyway, moving on, we are back in action. Sumlin getting the ball in for the Raiders as they start their offense. Here's Trey Brown getting it inside. A lot more uh. PT from Trey Brown we've seen in the second half of the season been a good bench presence for the Raiders. Nice post up inside by Tyrone oh. Baker. Oh, pass just about three, four inches too high for Cole Franklin. Cole Franklin, 6'4", freshman from DeSoto, Texas. You see the Bucks now have gone to a 2-3 defense. Trying to throw the Raiders off their rhythm a little bit. Speaking of Raider rhythm, stay till halftime. We may have see the Raider rhythms here on our dance team. Here's Rashid Jones not able to hit coming out of that corner. Oh, wow, that's yeah. offensive. Right in front of the Raiders bench, too. Tyrese Elliott standing there taking that in the chest. And here's the replay. You see Elliott holding his position. And Baker tries to lower 
that shoulder. You get the extension of that arm. Oh, on the spin right there. Lowers and drops. Yep, pushes out and extends. Great take there by Elliott. And then a quick break between the players to not let anything else escalate after that play. We'll take a quick break ourselves. You're watching Emerald Coast TV and the Region 8 Tournament. Northwest Florida up 11-9. At Northwest Florida State College, our cybersecurity program will give you the tools that you need to succeed in one of the fastest growing industries in the nation. With an increasing number of cyber attacks each year, the demand for cybersecurity professionals is at an all-time high. Cybersecurity professionals also have the ability to work remotely, and the starting pay for graduates can be over $75,000 per year. Contact Northwest Florida State College today and learn how you can earn your cybersecurity credentials in as little as two years. Blake White alongside Essex Rhodes. We're bringing you tonight's action in the final game of day one. It is the Northwest Florida Raiders and the Florida Southwestern Bucks. The four and the five seeds getting to play here tonight. They await the number one seed, Eastern Florida Titans, who beat the Hillsborough Hawks by 30. The first blowout game of the uh of the tournament. tournament yep first game we have was a one point win second game was a two point win and you jump to a 30 point win <laughs> totally different flow totally different game there now we got a one possession game and with 11 45 left in the first half See Florida Southwestern, they bring those two high guards out, put some ball pressure on, and then drop back into a 2-3 as Elliott hits a corner jump shot for a yeah. two. Elliott just so effective. He comes off the bench and just gets in the game and goes straight to work. It's what I'm used to seeing throughout the season with him. Big bench presence from Elliott. And on the other end... Sean Thomas getting it to go for the Bucks. Here's corner Trey Brown three. in the corner. Too short. Rebounded by Baker. Thomas slows it down. He's patient. Finds Baker. He skips it across. And yeah, they were looking for that skip originally. Yep. Franklin. And then A.J. Hopkins, he gives it back to Franklin, who misses. Raiders secure it. Simpkins pushes it up by himself. Hits the front of the rim. Trey Brown recovers but can't score. And then the Bucks recover on the missed shot. There's Thomas again. Two wow. more for number two. Ties the game up at 13. Got the bounce right there. That was a nice little handle inside. I like how he uses the body to get his defender off balance. A lot of contact offensively. Elliott with the three. So you put... But you got, got the corner three right there. You put three guards in. You work the ball around the top of the perimeter, soften up the defense, and get you a couple of dribbles inside, drop down to the corner, and knock it on down. Nice little game plan. Especially dribbling and working that baseline area, too, making the defense collapse even more. Here's oh. a deep three from Franklin. Right back at you. And he answers right in front of the Raider bench. Banks. Uh. Did you see it get all the way at the top? Yeah. It kind of forced it. Oh, wow. Deep three from. No good. Hopkins is no good. 
Sumlin ready to push the issue. He Way does. to get down the floor. This is the sophomore, redshirt sophomore from transfer from UTEP is Jamal Sumlin. Yeah, the Bucks fighting each other on that rebound. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll remain the Raiders ball. Brandon Sinclair checking in for the Raiders along with Scheider. Back in. Oh, wow. Great little recognition play there. As Simpkins taps it in. Raiders playing their zone defense. I was about to say they're matching up with what the Bucks are doing. Sometimes it's just a battle of which team is better and more disciplined at what they do. You got to stay on the ground. Wow. So pump fake, guy in the air, draw the foul right as the buzzer goes off for the shot clock. Yeah. All happened within a second and a half of each other. So Dedrick, Desdrick Lindsay at the line for the Bucks. This will be their first free throw attempt of the game. And it's good. Lindsay, 6'6", sophomore out of Louisville, Kentucky. Signed to play at Oregon. FCSAA All-State player, first team All-Citrus -Con Conference player. Three points away from 700 in his career. Let's look up. He's got two right now, so if he gets one more, 700 points in his career. 700. Let's see if he's got it. So he's a 50% shooter. Nope, misses this one. He'll have to wait his next trip down to break that. He's sitting at 699 right now. Here is Elliot just coming in. Did you say that's out of control? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But somewhere he gets the foul on the way. You see the replay here. He actually picks the ball up outside the three. Contact, contact, contact. Yeah, nowhere to come down. So, wow. And yeah, we have a, an official timeout. We will take a break ourselves. It's 18 to 18 with eight minutes to go. You're watching Emerald Coast TV in the Region 8 in NJCAA basketball playoff. Really, this view is awesome. I've said it before, we do live in paradise. There's also beauty that we can't see. But believe me, it's breathtaking. Nature, beauty, natural living, it's what we believe in. It's time. Choose natural gas. Back here at Raider Arena. You see a live look in of Coach DeMeo's bench. Coming out of the timeout, it's a tie game. This is a solid matchup between the number four and the number five seeds here in the FCSAA Region 8 Tournament. Winner awaits the number one seed, Eastern Florida Titans, on Friday at 3 o'clock. Make sure you join us tomorrow, too, for the women's side of the bracket as we get started with our Northwest Florida Raiders at 1 o'clock. Oh, wow. And right out of the timeout, we have an offensive foul. That's on Jaden Scheider. 
Raiders have gone to their 1-2-2 two, two press. Had some success out of this throughout the season. A little bit of pressure causes a lot. Or can cause a lot. Got the high weave going on for the Bucks. There's a walk. A couple of steps taken there. As Hopkins throws it up at the buzzer, he can't get it. Scheider recovers. Had a lot of contact on that pass, and it's stolen again by the Bucks. Hmm. Here's a little drop off for Carmani Gregory. <laughs> Elliott finds Jones. He tries to dance around with Hopkins. Nothing to go. Kicks it back to Elliott. Ten on the shot clock. Yeah, plenty of time. Simpkins drives tough. Can't make it, but draws the foul. It's 14 foul. Evans Paul picks up the foul. That'll be his first. Evans Paul had 51 blocks this season, ranking him second in the program in single season history. 51 blocks, that's, that's something there. I'm gonna watch the skip pass over here. Pretty sure that's going to be something they talk about when they run this set again. The so Raiders are playing a 1-2-2 oh, full court hands. press that falls into a man-to-man. -man. Oh, these fellas right here just quick with the hands. Deflections, Def deflections. After deflection, yep. after deflection, yes. If you can get double-digit deflections in a game, you've got a great chance of sealing a victory defensively. Three on the shot clock. Thompson has to pull up from three, and he gets it. Top of the key, three. That was a tough shot. Coming off that pity pat dribble. Oh! Nothing there. Wow. Rebounded by Gregory. Yeah, Simpkins tried to get to the rack aggressively and get a dunk. Oh, nice little up and under. That's Derek Lindsay, and that does break his career mark. 701 for Desdrick Lindsay on his career as a buck. I'd like to see the Raiders go back to uh, the three guards up top. Yeah. Get that weave action going and. You know, try to penetrate, get it inside. You got the bigs inside, and you can always work down and kick it out. We have a 30-second timeout called by the Raiders. We'll be right back ourselves. It is 25-20, Florida Southwestern up. At Northwest Florida State College, you can start your new career with high-quality trade programs. Students can earn their ASC certification with our Transportation Technician Program. With our cybersecurity program, security analysts can earn $90,000 a year. Our welding, CNC, and construction programs are perfect for those who work with their hands. And our medical laboratory program trains you to become a proficient lab technician. Explore your new career and apply today. Back here out of the timeout. Raiders find themselves down five quickly. Now they have substituted Will Hines in, continuing their 1-2-2 two, two press. Sorry, they've now dropped and just gone to a full court man press. They're switching up the defense again, trying to make the Buccaneers guess. And 
and a foul is going to be on Tavion Banks as he continues to reach in. This will be his second. Yeah, you got to get him out. Five minutes left in the first half. You don't want him picking up a third. Cross court pass to Hopkins. I'm sorry, to Gregory as he knocks down a three. The Bucks yeah, now good. extend their lead to eight. That skip pass is a little lethal. Well, you saw what the Bucks did there. They brought the defense in and collapsed, opened up the wings on the outside. Yeah, that's it. Wow. Well, Shatter gives that deflected. Basketball is all about reads on the inside. They're heavily guarded, kick it out. You can see here the miss from Thompson up the oh. court to Simpkins. And a slam jam from Sumlin to Simpkins. Nice bucket. And now you're starting to feel some of the momentum shift a little bit. You hear the crowd right there starting to wake up. Well, it's 9 o'clock our time, <laughs> 10 o'clock on the East Coast, so. Stepped out of bounds is Jamal Sumlin. Mm. Tough play there. And we go into our next media timeout, just under four minutes. It's the Raiders trying to find and get their momentum. We're going to take a quick break ourselves. You're watching the Region 8 tournament on Emerald Coast TV. Really, this view is awesome. I've said it before, we do live in paradise. There's also beauty that we can't see. But believe me, it's breathtaking. Nature, beauty, natural living, it's what we believe in. It's time. Choose natural gas. Coming out of the timeout, it's going to be Florida Southwestern's ball on the baseline. Yeah, the Raiders got to find something that's going to get them juiced up right here. There you go. A little mishandle of the ball. It's Thomas. It'll be a turnover. You're right, that's what the Raiders need. Yeah, Will Hines playing great defense on that in inbound pass. That's what he does. He just comes off that bench. Little scrappy bulldog down there. Does things that aren't going to show up in the, in the scores box. I think that's what the Raiders got to continue to do. Share that ball like that there. And you get that result from Tawan Simpkins. Knocks it down for three. And we are right back to a one possession game. Got to have a strong defensive stance right here. Watch the skip. Back. Oh! My goodness. Called a block on Schneider. Here's the replay. Here's the replay. Mm. Schneider's ah, still moving his feet. 
Oh my goodness, that's such a bang bang play. Mm. See, his his feet are sliding, they are set, but they do move while he's in the air. Such yeah. a bang bang play when it's live too. And he was not shooting just by the by the way. He was trying to throw a lob, and the official said that he was shooting. His intention, though, was to throw a lob down low to one of his bigs. Cutting back door. Mm -hmm. Jay Sean Thomas at the line, missing the first. Hmm. It's only the fifth attempt so far for the Bucks from the line. One for two. Shatter saved that pass from going out of bounds. Sumlin gets inside. Oh. He had Scheider down low. Base, yeah, on that baseline. Here's Sumlin pulling up. Nothing there. Scheider fighting down low. And now Hines oh, yeah. getting in. Jump ball. Don't call a foul. Gotta be a jump ball. Don't call a foul. Call yes, sir. Got to be a jump. He got two hands on the ball. Oh. Will Hines being very effective. There's a four low set back. Yeah. Oh, oh go up. Nice play. And, and one. someone getting it to go. Nice little entry pass right there. Patient enough to wait for it to set up. And I like that setup too. It's a four low where the opposite guard comes over to the block, sets a screen, and then just rotates around and is wide open. Mm. Can't get the bucket on the free throw. Raiders are two of four from free throw land. Simpkins with the on-ball defense. Ooh. Almost got away with the travel there, but Bucks keep it alive. Continue to move it around the perimeter. Hey, you got to get up on him. Oh, and great there's a defense! Shot clock violation. Great defense right there. Thirty seconds of good hard defense. The Bucks got away with a little bit of push off on the offensive end, also. Simkin, Sumlin, Rasheed Jones for three. And he gets it to go. One point advantage for the Raiders. Just like that, Northwest has found their lead. You get all the noise in the house. Everybody's coming alive. Oh, they got to communicate right there on the defense. Oh, way to slide your feet right there. Thompson throws one up. I'm sorry, Thomas throws one up. He can't get it. Scheider rebounds, but it's stolen from behind by Lindsey. Oh, and they call a foul. That'll be on Scheider. That's Scheider's third foul. Mm. 128 left in this first half. Scheider picks up his third. Remember, Tavion Banks went to the side before he picked up his third. They're keeping Scheider in, too. They'll probably take him out here. I see uh, Trey Brown over on the sideline. Yeah. After the free throw. And he does come off. I mean, your size, Banks and... and Scheider are now on the bench, but there's only a minute and a half before halftime. You know you're going to get him back in the second half. Brandon Sinclair, too, the other big, he's been in the hallway doing some stretching and some lunging and some jumping in the background. You see the press coming right now for the Bucks. 
great time to use it too. Try and catch the Raiders off guard. Oh, almost had the steal, but it goes right oh, back to Simpkins, wow. who windmills it back. It's not a dunk, but man, does he get it to go. That was heavy. Whew. That'll still get you going. One point lead for the Raiders as they just switch up the lead right now. Hopkins tries to get it inside, can't oh. get it. Rebounded by Paul. That's a little, oh, I thought that was a little too high. Evens Paul gets it to go. This is what I was looking for. Go back to that weave, loosen up the defense, kicking it out. There's Hines on the wing Short. corner, can't get it. Rebounded by Lindsey. That was a nice box out right there by Jeshon Thomas. Oh, back door, watch that back door. There's Evans Paul as he slams one down. Evans, Evans Paul scored in double figures 11 times in the season. Under 10 seconds to go in the first half. The Raiders are being patient, waiting for the last shot. Here's Simpkins, he pulls up. No. Gets it blocked. And that'll do it for the first half of play. The Raiders made a comeback, got it down to a one possession game, but still find themselves down three at the half. Florida Southwestern up 35 to the Northwest Florida Raiders, 32. And we'll be back in 15 for the start of the second half. You're watching the 2024 FCSAA NJCAA Region 8 basketball playoffs right here on Emerald Coast TV. Really, this view is awesome. I've said it before, we do live in paradise. There's also beauty that we can't see. But believe me, it's breathtaking. Nature, beauty, natural living, it's what we believe in. It's time. Choose natural gas. The FCSAA is recognizing the newest members of its Basketball Hall of Fame. The first class of 2024 inductee to the FCSAA Men's Basketball Hall of Fame is Dominique Coleman of Hillsboro Community College. Dominique Coleman is a household name at Hillsboro Community College, currently in his second season as head men's basketball coach for the Hawks, Coleman starred on the hardwood for Hillsboro during the 2004-2005 season, playing for fellow FCSAA Men's Basketball Hall of Famer Derek Worrells. Prior to Hillsboro, however, Coleman played his freshman season at neighboring St. Petersburg College, where he scored 11.2 points per game and helped the Titans earn a spot in the 2003 FCSAA Tournament. Coleman initially transferred to Bethune-Cookman University for his sophomore season, but after one semester realized the two-year college environment was the path to future success. Coleman landed at Hillsboro for the 2004-05 season, where he promptly led the Hawks to a berth in the 2005 FCSAA tournament. At 27.1 points per game, he led the NJCAA in scoring, while also averaging 7.3 rebounds and 2.3 assists, which earned him a spot on the all-FCSAA men's basketball team. After graduating from Hillsboro, 
Coleman accepted a full scholarship to the University of Colorado, where he earned a bachelor's degree in sociology. On the court, he played in 54 games between 2005 and 2007, capping off his career by scoring 11.7 points per game and leading the Buffaloes with 6.9 rebounds and 3.4 assists, 1.6 steals, and four double-doubles en route to being named team MVP and finalist for the 2007 University of Colorado Athlete of the Year. The pros were up next for Coleman, which included parts of two seasons in the NBA G League, camp time with both the Oklahoma City Thunder and Los Angeles Lakers, and then a 10-year career in Europe. Coleman played professionally in France, Italy, Belgium, Austria, Ukraine, and Finland before retiring in 2017. Born in Oakland, California, Coleman grew up in Key West and was named Florida's Mr. Basketball in 2002 while playing for Key West High School. Presenting the Hall of Fame Awards on behalf of the FCSAA are Rob Cheney, FCSAA Associate Director and Athletics Commissioner, and Chuck Moore, Director of Athletics at Tallahassee Community College and FCSAA Division I Men's Basketball Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join us in welcoming Dominique Coleman to the FCSAA Men's Basketball Hall of Fame. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd like to recognize another member of the 2024 Division I All-FCSAA men's basketball team who was in attendance for today's games. Please join the FCSAA in congratulating Elijah Weiss from Pensacola State College.
Really, this view is awesome. I've said it before. We do live in paradise. There's also beauty that we can't see. But believe me, it's breathtaking. Nature. Beauty. Natural living. It's what we believe in. It's time. Choose natural gas. At Northwest Florida State College, you are immersed in rich culture, embraced by the community, and inspired to envision the extraordinary. Our diverse degrees and programs will jumpstart your future, and our dedicated staff will challenge you to succeed. Think beyond the possible. Dream beyond the reasonable. Go beyond the greatness of the ones who have gone before you at Northwest Florida State College. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for the start of the second half of the last game of the first day of the Region 8 tournament. And it is Florida Southwestern up by three on the home Northwest Florida Raiders. Coach, what you got from the first half action? I'm looking at uh, these numbers here. Six lead changes, six times the game's been tied. Talk about points in the paint, 16 to 14, advantage Florida Southwest. And then bench points. Oh, wow. Over the back. Oh, they call it a goal goal team. Tending. Interesting call there. I didn't see him go. Wow. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> hey, you're not an official, yep, buddy. Yep, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you got 10 points off the bench from Florida Southwest and only Five points coming from Northwest Florida. A lot of uh, a lot of different differences from what I'm used to seeing from the Raiders right now. Nice rebound gathered. Simpkins kicks it up. Three point attempt up and no good. Shatter. Oh, tries to get the pass across the paint. That ball deflected out of bounds. But back-to-back -back offensive rebounds for the Raiders. It's what you want to see, but you also want to see them put that ball in the hole on the second or third chance attempts. They're going to get one more here on this possession. Yeah, the Raiders with 22 rebounds, 15 for Florida Southwest. Well, and if you look, too, it's, it's quite amazing that the Raiders are shooting 37% to Florida Southwestern's 52, and they're only down a possession. Then you look at Florida Southwestern shooting 50% behind the arc. It's that same play we saw in the first half, that little four low set. This time it's kicked out to Tavion Banks. Banks and Scheider both with three fouls. They're finally back on the floor together. That's where the Raiders had their most success. That short's coming up short. Oh. Sumlin this time nice. getting a rebound. That's three rebounds in a row. That's oh. great for the Raiders, but man, we'd love a basket too. Yeah, you got to be able to finish that thing. <laughs> Here's Banks for three. He can't get oh, it. Wow. Fourth rebound in a row. It's Simpkins. Ah, you got Fifth rebound that. in a row. He finally gets it to go. Goodness, what a possession. Oh, a little too physical right there on this inbound. Now you know what? Play that aggressive. Just keep putting the ball in the hole. Yeah, you got to get your hands off him. Yep. Someone picks it up here. First on Sumlin. One point deficit right now for the Raiders. But you see they come out in this half a lot of activity. Trying to work their way back to the top. Crowd wanted to travel. Travel. 
Oh, you can't gamble on that right there. There's Thomas driving in. And it's deflected by Scheider as he picks up the steal. Now he's going to push it up to Sumlin. Sumlin in, in and out in between the nice legs. Spin. And he's still spinning around on that pivot. Nowhere to go. Kick that out. 15 on the shot clock. Wow. Good patience there by the guard. Nice little dance he had going on yep. there. The UTEP two-step. I like the use of that pivot. Here's Banks Thanks. inside with one on the shot clock. Uh, and it is a shot clock violation. Defensive presence right now of the Bucks just getting a hand on everything. the crowd right now trying to chant for the Raiders. Thompson, Thomas just takes that in easy, un, untouched, and scores two. Gives him 15 for the Bucks. Sumlin thanks Simpkins. Simpkins leads Leads all scorers right now on the floor with 16. Tavion Banks trying to get into the paint. Backs down, spins over the head of Tyrone Baker, and he gets it to fall. Nice high arcing shot right there. Bucks spreading the ball around the perimeter. Thomas. I was going to say that can be a whistle there. Yep. Gets the foul called. He'll head to the line to shoot. Jay Sean Thomas at the line. Bucks shot five of seven in the first half. This will be their first free throw attempts of the second. Thomas gets it to go. Said, Jayshon Thomas played very little during the first three quarters of the season last year. Came on late to be an impact player and has carried that momentum into this season and has become one of the prime players for this Bucks team. Yeah, a little, can't little reach. reach right there. You can't put your whole body weight. Yeah, I was going to say you're leaning on him. You make him hold him and you up. That's Tyrone Baker, his second foul. calling a timeout for the Raiders, but instead the officials said it my time mm. to get the court cleaned. So it saves the timeout <laughs> for Since Northwest. he didn't call a, a foul, he's going to... I don't know. Well, I don't know if he saw Elliot giving the timeout signal. He just started walking on the floor and said, my time. The Raiders almost got a five-second call there. Couldn't get the ball in. Now they've gone to that four-low set. There's that high screen. Getting it to the corner. Bring that ball all the way around. And now you've got Elliott in the corner again. And right there, I just swing the ball. Get it around from side to side. Take it over there and bring it back. Make the defense continue to move. Elliott, no good on the shot. Oh, good hand by Simpkins. And the foul right there. That's on number 10, Cole Franklin. Doesn't agree with that call. We're going to have our first media timeout of the second half. It's 
Florida Southwestern up. On the Raiders. You're watching Emerald Coast TV and the NJCAA Region 8 Basketball Playoffs. At Northwest Florida State College, you are immersed in rich culture, embraced by the community, and inspired to envision the extraordinary. Our diverse degrees and programs will jumpstart your future, and our dedicated staff will challenge you to succeed. Think beyond the possible. Dream beyond the reasonable. Go beyond the greatness of the ones who have gone before you at Northwest Florida State College. Welcome back to Raider Arena on the campus of Northwest Florida State College here in Niceville, Florida, where the Florida Southwestern Bucks are up 39-36 on the hometown Raiders. Juan Simpkins going to head to the line to shoot two. After Cole Franklin picked up his first foul for the Bucks. Both of these teams used to playing in this tournament. Pretty much every year, one of these two teams is in it and in it to win it. However, somebody's got to go home tonight, and the winner is waiting the number one seed, Eastern Florida Titans, on Friday at 3 o'clock. I like the patience of the Bucks right now. Up one point, yep, you're moving the ball around until you find the shot that you want or get the foul that you want. This is what I'm asking for to see from the Raiders. They're getting the ball from one side of the court to the other. Got the defense scrambling. I mean, like you say, they put it on the floor trying to get into the lane and draw the foul. Great formula. This foul is actually going to be on Elliott, his first. I thought they were going to give it over to Banks. I guess Elliott got there first. Here, the oh. Bucks throwing it in from the baseline with 15 on the shot clock. Tough off-balance shot, but a great one-handed snag by Banks as he rebounds it. Elliott pushes it up the floor. Mm. Lost the dribble, but no one there to get it. Banks pulls up. Oh. Too far on the jump shot, rebounded by Baker. Gregory controls the ball, gets it back to Baker. Trey Brown on him. He's yeah, got one hand, hand on the back. Yep. Kicks it over to the corner for Thomas. Can't get the three. Great box out by the Buccaneers. And mm. there is Evans Paul getting the ball to fall. Evans Paul shot 70% from the field during the regular season. He's a high flyer, looks for the lob coming from his teammates. Oh, the Simpkin gets robbed. Stolen by Carmani Gregory. Oh, and a foul right there. Simpkins is going to be called for this one. It'll be his second, the team's fourth of the half. Again, if the Raiders can just get some better shots, get the ball to fall. Uh oh They'd be, they are, they are in this only down in possession. They get their momentum back. Dang. There's this reach in foul. No, that'll be against the Bucks. Oh, offense, okay, yep, offensive on the switch there. Cole Franklin. 
makes his second team's third. Glad you saw that because I my pole blocked it, so I missed it. UWF coaches in the house there, just down the street in Pensacola. The Argonauts. It's Coach Mann and Coach Coach Ray. Raiders have the ball again. 20 seconds on the shot clock, 14 on the game clock. Down three. No, this one stolen by Ra. Evans Paul. Oh, Shatter got away with a little body action right there. Elliott tied up with Thomas, and Thomas is going to be called for a foul. The reach in. Elliott tried, can't get it, it's tipped back out. Trey Brown now attacks baseline. He gets it to fall for the Raiders. And that was one point game. Reese Jones that had that block. Reese has 47 blocks this season. He ranks num number three in the program for single season. She said Evans with 51 and Reese with 47. 47, yes. Oh, wow. Uh, Thomas. I'm sorry, that's not Thomas, that's Franklin, tried to hustle. Yeah, he slipped in the wet spot. Scheider's got to calm down. Trey Brown, they're trying to calm him down, walking right in front of us. At this moment, you, you, I'd want to take Scheider out and, and have a conversation with him. If you're arguing with every teammate, it's not every teammate. There's got to be some of you. He just looked over at the bench, put two thumbs up, so maybe he's... He saw he was about to get subbed. Yep. <laughs> Here's a three from... Or a shot from Trey Brown from the elbow. He gets it to fall. Oh, that's a... You can't grab that man like that. You gotta be smart on defense. Raiders now have the lead back after losing it in the middle of the first half. Someone gets put on the floor by Thomas. And Thomas is gonna head to the line to shoot for the Bucks. This foul is on Scheider, and that's his fourth. You see the conversation with Scheider. Trying to tell him to calm his, down. His like, teammates, no, like, his teammates trying to talk to him, and he's just, don't touch me. And you can't lose. Yeah, he, he, he doesn't have his composure. Right. You got to get him out of there. Banks is at the half court line, ready to check in. Yeah, he's got to go sit down. Everything is just a hostile conversation with him at the moment. Dedrick Lindsay, Desdrick Lindsay back in for the Bucks and Tavion Banks back in for the Raiders. I love Shider's effort in this play, but you got to be able to keep your head. Arguing with your team isn't going to help you get the win. And right now you have to maintain composure. Especially it's a tie. Yes, yeah, a tie ball game. You're in the state tournament. This is not when you want to go against your own teammates. Elliott with the miss. Oh, oh wow. and a contested shot made by Cole Franklin on the other end for the Bucks. Push it, push it, push it and set it up. There's Trey Brown going right at him again on go. the other end. Oh, you can't oh, do that. That's a tech. That's a tech. Just talked about keeping composure. Yep. And he, he recognized it just as soon as. As soon as he got caught. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as the ref blew the whistle. 
I'm tripping. My bad, coach, but. And if he didn't make it so obvious, <laughs> you know. Yeah, he run, just looks straight at him and barking. Run down the middle of the floor back on defense and you can bark. And Trey Brown going to be called for the foul. Or, I'm sorry, the tech for taunting. Yeah, you got to be smart right now. And we are going to have a timeout ourselves. 44-44, all tied up here at Raider Arena. You're watching the Region 8 basketball playoffs right here on Emerald Coast TV. We'll be right back. Really, this view is awesome. I've said it before, we do live in paradise. There's also beauty that we can't see. But believe me, it's breathtaking. Nature, beauty, natural living, it's what we believe in. It's time. Choose natural gas. Right before the break, we uh, had a look with a couple of the Raiders players losing their composure. We had Scheider. He had to go to the bench arguing with his teammates. And then you just, we just had Trey Brown. He got a tech. This takes me back to uh, the South Carolina LSU women's game. Chippy. Yes. Getting physical, getting frustrated. And then it comes out in the wrong places. Yes, and then you lose one of your monsters when the tournament comes around. Six, seven female, just a beast, but she'll miss the first game. It's the same thing that's going on here. But you got to reel it in before it becomes that type of situation. Before the consequences hit. Yes. So Florida Southwestern goes up two off those technical free throws. Oh, travel. And instead, Tyrone Baker scores. And it's back to a four-point lead. I said at the beginning of the day this was going to be the closest game of the day, but we've already seen two really close games in game one and game two. Here's someone getting two more to go. Nice work by Jamal right there. We're back to a two-point game. And really, Coach, it's going to come down to who keeps their composure in the final ten yeah. and who makes that costly mistake in that oh, time they don't races. need it. Here is Banks doing it himself. Great pass from Elliott. Another tie ball game. Oh, oh and, and another, another steal. steal. Here's Banks again, and that should be that should be, that should be wow. something. I guess you just couldn't hear it. The crowd was too loud. You couldn't Did hear the whistle. Did they blow the whistle? Yeah. Oh, okay. I couldn't hear it either. <laughs> so whistle blown. Everybody, man, the bench. They're probably going to come take a look at this also. Okay, common foul. Yeah, that's official that's calling it in said he came down on his body. Yeah. So making him play for the ball. Yeah. I don't know though. If you just push in the back, I can't. I 
I, I wouldn't want to call that just a regular common foul. And we're seeing a replay. You, you're not on your screen, but we see it here. And there was a, the left hand went for the ball and the right hand went in the back. Okay. So from that official's angle, he saw the, the left hand enter for the ball. Where on oh. our end, we saw yeah, the shove in the back with the right. But down the other end, it's... Nice little bounce pass inside. A, a bucket for the Bucks, And then on the other end, another foul. And the Raiders will go to the line again. This time... It'll be Simpkins going to the line. And Carmani Gregory picking up the foul. Simpkins at the line, misses the first. Raiders are now four of nine from the line. Got to be able to hit the free throws. Gets this one. Raiders are now 50% from free throw line. You got to do yourself a favor and score while the clock isn't running. Ten minutes to go in the game. Ten minutes to go on the first day of the tournament. Kicks it oh, over to the corner. It's Hopkins for three. three, and he gets it. Back to four. Four-point game. You got to swing the ball. You got to go back to sharing the ball, moving the ball around. The Raiders have 15 assists to Florida Southwestern's eight, so they have been sharing it all day, and here's Banks getting it to bank off the glass. Yeah, you got to go back to what works. You got to take your time, get you a, a bucket right here. You end up with the turnover. Sumlin, man powers at home. Number one versus number one. That's been a good battle so far. Yeah, back to a tie ball game. So it's a 1v1. One, 1v1. One one. One Oh. Hopkins again, this time too much. Great move by the Raiders. You see Elliott just simply step, step in, front, in front. Yes. Keep him from getting that ball, and it's Raider ball. Could have got called for that foul. I like to call those guard box outs. <laughs> it's not underneath the, bus, the bucket, but they're chasing, out there. Yeah, yep. Chasing the ball out of bounds, running away from the bucket. Guards, you can do it too. Everybody on the floor should be boxing out. Yeah. It's not just a big man thing. You don't see a lot of boxing out in the lower levels anymore. It's just go get the ball, but such a lost art. It could be so effective. Oh, nice back door. Oh, yes. Talk about being effective. The pass from Elliott to Jawan Simpkins. Simpkins cuts back door. And the Raiders have found themselves with a two-point lead here with eight minutes to go in the game and the crowd on their side. Yeah, you got to keep him on his left. Great job by Sumlin. Bring him back left. Oh, nothing there. Banks rebounds. Flips it backwards to find Sumlin so he can take care of the ball and bring it up. On ball Sumlin screen. cuts inside, backdoor touch. Oh. Come on. <laughs> a little one-handed go for Elliott, and then an acrobatic play for Banks, but he can't get it to fall either. It's rebounded by Baker. Yeah, those shot blockers are really taking effect. And they take their toll. They make you think about what you really want to do. Oh, good defense. Oh, wow. Just goes up and gets it is Evans Paul. Evans Paul just... They say high flyer. Went up over everyone just to get that rebound right there.
see the live look-ins here at Raider Arena. The Raider cheerleaders and the Raider club. All staying out late as we're approaching 10 o'clock Central Time, 11 on the Eastern Seaboard. 2-2-1 two, two, press coming up for the Bucks. The skip is available right here. Middle is available as well. Always. <laughs> Always. Diagonals and middle. Oh, look at. No. Trey Brown gets it down to Banks. Banks in that short corner. He does like to pop from right there. Being patient. Kicks it out to Simpkins. There's three on the shot clock. Simpkins drives. Finds Brown in the That's corner. Short. It is short and it's a shot clock violation. Did that not get tipped? I mean, that thing was like three feet short. And now we're going to have another timeout. This time we're going to take a break with them. 55-55, just under seven minutes to go, and you're watching Emerald Coast TV. We'll be right back. Really? This view is awesome. I've said it before. We do live in paradise. There's also beauty that we can't see. But believe me, it's breathtaking. Nature. Beauty. Natural living. It's what we believe in. It's time. Choose natural gas. Check out the scoreboard here, presented by Okaloosa Gas. Raiders still not shooting great compared to Florida Southwestern, 42% compared to 52%. We still find ourselves in a tie ball game. Assist in favor of the Raiders, 17 to eight. Rebounds in favor of the Raiders, 33 to 21. And turnovers in favor of the Raiders, 10 to 13. Now we've, we've seen games like this at, on this court with this team where the stats the just, don't match. just don't match up. <laughs> and you think, okay, you look at those stats, the Raiders should be up by maybe 8, 10 points, something like that. But instead, we find ourselves here at a tie game at 55. Yeah, you got to look at it also, though, at three-point percentage, 41.7 for Florida Southwestern and 28.6 for the Raiders. And that my friends, is the difference in the ball game right now. Florida Southwestern has Tom, Thomas with 20 points, and the Raiders have Banks and Simpkins 21 and 10. Banks with a double-double, 10 points and 10 rebounds right now. Ball deflected, but ends up, wow. And then a slam from wow. Tyrone Baker. On the other end, the Raiders trying to move that ball around and get the look that they want. Tough pass there as it rattles oh. off of Brown to Sumlin to Tavion Banks. And we're back to being a tie game. Thomas almost lost his balance there, but gets it around. Hopkins now decides to drive. He switches from left to right-handed. Yeah, he gets it off the glass. Paint was wide open right there. Yeah, no one uh, shifted over for that help side. And this time, no one shifts on the help oh. side and on the Raiders, or on the Bucks end. And Tavion Banks slams it down for the Raiders. And Coach DeMeo calls a full timeout. We'll take a break ourselves. 59-59 still. Don't go anywhere. We're tied. You're watching the NJCAA Region 8 Basketball Playoffs on Emerald Coast TV. At Northwest Florida State College, our cybersecurity program will give you the tools that you need to succeed in one of the fastest growing industries in the nation. With an increasing number of cyber attacks each year, the demand for cybersecurity professionals is at an all-time high. 
Cybersecurity professionals also have the ability to work remotely, and the starting pay for graduates can be over $75,000 per year. Contact Northwest Florida State College today and learn how you can earn your cybersecurity credentials in as little as two years. Coming out of the timeout, it's 59-59. It's going to be Bucks ball with 5.21 to go. Raiders are out in their 1-2-2. Dropping into a man-to-man. -man. I think they do better keeping the ball on the left side of the floor. There they go to the left. Now switching it over to the right. Ball back in the hands of Thomas. He's been their go-to. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Thomas looked like he lost the ball, and Banks is called with a body. I was going to say, he's just a little too physical with it. That's his fourth. 4.55 left, four fouls. Guess who they'll need if he goes out. You don't think they'll put Scheider in if he fouls out? Thomas at the line, shooting. Bucks right now are 10 of 13. 11 of 14. Yeah, you can't afford to take Banks out, but. Oh, yeah. You have no choice but to go with Scheider if, if he does foul out. The bench today for the Raiders is kind of short. Yeah, Only have Scheider, Brown, and Will Hines available. Thomas knocks down both. Clutch free throw shooter in today's game. Banks oh. trips, stumbles, recovers. Ball finds Tompkins. And the Bucks are going to be called for a foul. Who? Simpkins, not Tompkins. I'm sorry. Thanks, Coach. It's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> been here since 12. <laughs> oh. Tom, I was just combining names. Yeah. Know, trying to make it quicker. Tawan Simpkins. There you go. Know, <laughs> comes down to Tompkins, so... <laughs> Tawan Simpkins, sorry about that, folks. He's at the line shooting now. That's all right. I call him Taquan at the first play. <laughs> so, you know, we all make mistakes. It's late. I'm tired. So we even mess up our, ki our guys' names. Yeah, when we coach. Back to another tie ball game. Number two hits both. Two for two at the line. And I say I, I feel like the Raiders do better when they force the ball to the left side of the court. You want to keep the ball out of the middle. Oh, really high shot there. It doesn't hit anything, and Banks just pulls it out of the air. Slow up it to down. Elliott. He pushes it. Nothing. Oh, Banks! Wow! 
Oh my! Wow! Oh my! Yes, you gotta look see the at, replay. Look at this. Jeez. It's blocked off the glass, and really? Banks just follows and slams it in over two bucks. Can we get a Sports Center top ten nominee? That, jeez. Woo! This place, everybody's standing now. 63, 61. Yeah. You you up? Oh, I'm <laughs> awake now. You awake? <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Can we see that again? Everybody's up and clapping. 63, oh 61. Tavion Banks. That's how you go to a break, baby. Mm, mm, mm. That's why I always say follow, follow, follow. He followed straight down off the miss. And the Raiders up by two. We'll be right back after this break. Really? This view is awesome. I've said it before. We do live in paradise. There's also beauty that we can't see. But believe me, it's breathtaking. Nature. Beauty. Natural living. It's what we believe in. It's time. Choose natural gas. Here's that replay. See, it's blocked off mm. the backboard, and then Tavion Banks, Elliot driving in, and it's ricocheted off that backboard. Tavion Catches. Banks just recognizing it in bodies. Catches De Desdrick Lindsay under there. And also, wow, who was that down there at the bottom? Couldn't tell, but that was a nice follow. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Dun -dun -dun, dun -dun -dun. Jeez. Well, don't go anywhere, folks. It's 63 61. Raiders up right now. This place is starting to rock. So that was Eve's Paul and. Desdrick Lindsay that got caught up on that put back out. Wow. Now how does that momentum go for the Raiders right now? Oh, oh. Thought someone may have tried to go for that, but he stays home. I live with that defense though. You don't want to gamble right now. Nope. You got the lead again. You got to box out. You got to have those rebounds. Yep, instead it's Lindsay getting it on the putback. Ties it up again. Yeah, Deadly Lindsay said, hey, you might have got that flush on me, but I'm still putting these two points back on you. Yeah, you got to stay mellow for whatever's going on in the game. Someone backing down Thomas. Kicks Be it patient. out. Ball's moved around. Five on the shot clock. No. Oh. Simpkins drives, kicks it out. Elliott shoots off the back of the rim. It's rebounded by Paul. You got to go back to swinging that thing. Get the defense scrambling. Make them run side to side. Get the lane wide open, then you penetrate. So they should keep the ball on this side. Shade them over here. Oh. Here's that, Thomas up for Paul. He can't get it to fall. They have better effects when they keep the ball on the left side of the court. And here's Simpkins. And, oh, wow. Boy, a lot of contact on that shot. No foul. Rebounded by the Bucks. Thomas pushes it up. Get the ball back over here. Here comes another high on ball screen. They're either using it or Thomas, they, or they're going to fake it. Fake it, yeah. Oh, Banks tried to come across. Oh, nice and steal. Deflected and stolen by someone. Two minutes to go. Now swing the ball from side to side. Get the ball on one side of the court and go from side to side. There you go. Just go one, right back to the other. One reversal, but you got to. Someone gets it blocked. Simpkins recovers. And we got 10 on the shot clock. And wet spot. Yep. Yeah, down in the paint, that's that's a safety issue there. For sure. A lot of action goes on down there. 
So the officials call the time. And right now, the, the way these guys are flying, mm -hmm. you don't want anybody to come down and injure anything. It's on a little mishap. These guys are really getting off the ground. Into Eight seconds. Sinks. He oh. spins, loses it. It is recovered by Elliott, though. There's three, three on the shot clock. He fires it up, Bucket and it gets good. the roll. 90 seconds left. Raiders up by two. Intense ball game right now. They got to get the ball on this side of the floor. They have the better defensive effects when the ball's on the left side. These are the results you want. These are the results you want. Keep it over here. 10 on the shot clock. Ah. Franklin drives. Nowhere to go. Kicks it out to Lindsey. Three seconds. He's inside. And oh, foul right there. Someone three fouls seconds. him on the arm as the shot clock expires. Mm, tough 60 break. seconds left. 65-63. Tyrone Baker at the line. The Bucks have been very, very good from the free throw strike. Now 13 of 16 for the game. Oh, he's good for his free throws. 65 tight. No timeout called here. The Raiders are going to run a play. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Double on-ball screen. Goes to Elliott at the top of the keys. Flips it around to Simpkins. Simpkins going to go to it. Oh, oh, he had Banks there, but Lindsey steps in front of it and gets the steal. And now there's 35 seconds. Bucks have possession. They're going to call a timeout as it crosses half court. Right now, looking at your numbers, if you, uh, everybody wants to go with statistics, right? <laughs> you got to get the ball. I'm saying it all night this second half. You got to get the ball on the left half of the court. You get better results. Rebound count, 24, Florida Southwestern, 37, Northwest Florida. The assist, 19 to 10. Coach, just looking at this, scoring-wise, favor of the Bucks. All the other intangibles favor of the Raiders, and that gives us a tie game. A tie ball game. With 28 seconds to go. You look at individual scoring, 22 by Thomas for Florida Southwestern, 23 by Simpkins, 16 for Banks. And then the next one up, you have Baker with eight for Florida Southwestern. You have Lindsey. Lindsay with eight, and also Paul with eight off of Florida Southwestern. Both teams scoring by committee. But like you say, you look at that 19 assists. You got to go back to, first off, you got to get this stop. Then you got to get the middle open when you're on the offensive end. That way you can, you know, you got to get past those two defenders. 21 evens Paul. And if you're the Bucks, you can just take it inside, try to draw the foul. You're in, a, you're in the bonus. Yeah. You can waste all this time and get it down to about seven seconds on the oh, shot clock. Oh, they lost but the ball out of bounds right there. Huge, huge wow. blunder for the Bucks as it just trickles off the hands of Paul out of bounds. 15 seconds. And no shot clock. It'll be Raider ball with the chance to go for one, they one shot. Up the middle. They, they can do the same concept, the though. Same concept. You can drive in. You're in the bonus as well. So you don't have to force any shots here. 15 on the shot, on the game clock. Here we go. All right here, I fake to the middle and then just drive right there. Yes. Yep. Someone finds Elliott, swings it around to Jones. He drives. Ra. Ra. Oh, and it's a hard foul. Jones hits the ground with a thud. 
Here's the replay Two as you see Paul half. goes up to contest. Oh, wow. And I believe it was blocked from behind. It was blocked from behind. Cleanly by Baker, body. but the foul is on Evans Paul, who came through and got the body. And that is exactly the call. That's his. No, they got the foul on Baker. Oh, they switched it, so they did call it on Baker. But He's from that it. replay, you could have done it the other way around. Regardless, you got to hit this free throw. Rasheed Jones, argu arguably the Raiders' best shooter at the line. One and one at the line. No, I'm sorry, he's shooting two. He's going up for a shot. Mm -hmm. 2.7 seconds left. Oh, and he rattles in the first. Raiders have a one point lead. And a timeout called by Coach Murphy and the Bucks. You want to try to ice the shooter right now. Yep, ice the shooter, but also set up your play for if he misses or if he makes. Yeah. And, Coach, I'll say this. If he misses, if you got a timeout, get it to half court, call it, set up your play to go win the game at the buzzer. If he makes it, you could still call a timeout, get it to half court, or you can try and push that thing, get a quick shot or a deep pass inside to your best shooter for a jump shot. I think you got a better chance with the timeout. I agree. Great ball game. So every game tonight has been a close one. Only game that we've had that was really out of reach. Eastern Florida, the number one team against Hillsborough Hawks, that number 18, a 30-point win. The first game we had of the night, the number two Daytona State Falcons playing the number seven Tallahassee Eagles. That was a one-point win. You had number three, the second, the second game of the night, number three, Chipola Indians playing number six, Indian River Pioneers. And that was down to the wire. So we've only had one game tonight that was out of hand. Every game so far has been a nail biter. Coach, the Bucks are out of timeout. The Raiders have two. So again, you've got to know what your play is right here. Yeah. If the Raiders somehow get the ball back, you've got to immediately foul. But if you make, you've got to launch. If you miss, it's one dribble, one pass pull up, and hope for the best. Here we go. Rasheed Jones at the line with 2.7. And Rob misses that one. They got to step up. Why was it contested shoot that? shots at half court and it's no good? The Raiders get a one-point win at home and will face the number one seeded Eastern Florida Titans on Friday right here at 3 o'clock. Final score, Florida Southwestern 65 and the Northwest Florida Raiders 66. 2.7 seconds left. I don't think that was... That was not the look you wanted you for, for the You had a couple Bucks. more dribbles. Or if anything, making that one extra pass to get, get the ball to the shooter. Yes. And it was instead almost a contested shot at midcourt from Baker, and it just comes up short for the Bucks. But man, what about the tenacity and the determination to come back, just keep fighting and chipping away for the Northwest Florida Raiders on their home floor. Shortened bench tonight, but a great crowd that stayed out past 10. Great win for the Raiders and a great ball game. Great night of basketball all day long. It has been. Four good games. Congratulations to the Northwest Florida Raiders. As we clock out for this long day of basketball and you see again we're looking at the stats well you see there the players <laughs> on the floor we look over at the stats 
Northwest, again, all the all the, all the the non-point uh, statistics. 19 assists, 37 rebounds, only 11 turnovers, 42% from the field, 26% behind the arc. Good numbers. And we got a double-double for Tavion Banks at 16 and 12. You see the paint points 36 to 34. Wow. Yeah. A battle down low. Bench points 13 for the Raiders, 14 for the Pioneers. I'm sorry, the Bucks. Excuse me. But those second chance points too, 16 to 8 in favor of the Raiders. Those points off turnovers, 19 points to 13 points for the Bucks. And coach, we knew this was going to be a close one. Seed four versus seed five. It ends up being a one-point game. 11 lead changes, 16 ties. Yeah. And it was just back and forth all game long. You look at time with the lead, Florida Southwest, 20 minutes with possession of the lead. So those last eight, 853, it was the start and finish that the Raiders had. Everything in the middle was all for the Bucks, but they put together a great game. They did. So that's going to do it for us here from day one, game four, the FCS AA Region 8 Tournament. Join us tomorrow, will you? We're going to do the women's side of the bracket. We're starting out with our Northwest Florida Raiders at 1 o'clock is the first game. So we will see you again right here tomorrow, Emerald Coast TV. I'm Ben Blake White, Essex Rhodes, our producer, RJ Murdoch, our cameraman, up at the top. And we are signing off here from Niceville. We will see you all tomorrow. Great day of basketball. Everybody have a great night.